You've probably heard a lot about the testing for the coronavirus disease. There is a high demand for it as the disease continues to progress. Different airlines are in fact requiring COVID testing before boarding. And because of this high demand, not only doctors' offices and pharmacies are offering COVID testing, but FDA has also recently approved an in-home testing kit. Looks like a lot of you are confused about the coronavirus testing. I got so many messages about it, and many of you are actually wondering what are different types of COVID tests? What is the process? How to collect the sample? And what kind of test is more accurate? Well, you had these questions, so I got you the answers. I'm your pharmacist, Sidra, and in this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions regarding COVID testing. All right, so let's talk basics first. Why COVID testing is done and why should you get tested? Well, COVID testing is done to find out whether you are infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the coronavirus disease. And that being said, not everyone needs to be tested for COVID-19. If you're not sick or have not been around anybody who's sick, then you don't need to get tested. I would say primarily you would need to get tested if you have symptoms of COVID-19, you've had a close contact with a confirmed COVID positive person, and you were close to that person within six feet for a total of 15 minutes, or you're traveling and the airline requires you to get tested, or it's a requirement by your work, when they wanna make sure that you potentially being positive could actually impact other, could put others at risk. So let's talk about the types of COVID-19 tests. Mainly, there are two types of COVID tests, diagnostic test and the antibody test. Diagnostic tests will look for active infection and in this test, mucus or saliva samples are collected to determine whether you have the disease or not. Currently, there are two types of diagnostic tests available, the molecular test and the antigen test. Molecular test could be something like RT-PCR test that actually detects the genetic material of the virus. And then we have the antigen test that actually detects the specific proteins from the virus. This would be your um, rapid test, for example. So basically, the whole purpose of these diagnostic tests is to find out whether you are currently COVID positive or not. The second main kind of test is the antibody test, which determines whether you have been infected with coronavirus at some point in past, even if that occurred months ago. Now keep in mind that the antibody test cannot determine the active infection. It just looks for the COVID-19 antibodies in your bloodstream. And if you don't know, antibodies are the proteins your immune system produces to fight off a foreign invader, like in this case, a coronavirus. I've seen a lot of people think that if they have the antibodies for the coronavirus, then they are immune to the virus. But I want to clear this misconception that, that at this point, the research does not know that the presence of the coronavirus antibodies makes you fully immune to the disease. That means you could be still at risk of the COVID infections in future. So you know what that means? If you are a survivor of COVID-19 infection, do not go out and about and party all night because there is still a risk that you may get infected again. So continue to maintain social distancing, follow the CDC guidelines, wear a mask, protect yourself and people around you. Now, in addition to diagnostic and antibody tests, there are some alternative methods of testing available as well like the combination test. So since the symptoms of COVID and flu are very similar, wouldn't it be nice to have a test which can identify both COVID and influenza virus A and B? Exactly, that's why we have this combination test. This test is great because we are kind of in the middle of flu season and also COVID. A healthcare provider determines whether you're eligible for this test or not. And if you are eligible, the FDA has actually approved that patients may collect their samples in the comfort of their home and ship it directly to the diagnostic lab for analysis. Pretty easy, right? Now, FDA has only given the emergency use authorization for the in-home COVID testing test. Once the pandemic is over, the in-home testing kits probably won't be available. 
But for now, you can actually order it from the Everlywell website. I'll put the link of the website for you in the description. They actually have the in-home te testing kit for available for around $109. In order to order it, you should be 18 years or older. You must fill out a questionnaire at the point of sale. Once you register yourself, uh, Everly Well will send you the kit with the instructions on how to collect the samples. Um, you're going to use a nasal swab to collect the sample, ship it back to them, and you can receive your results in the comfort of your home within 48 to 72 hours. Another option is the saliva test. Now, this is actually a pretty convenient method to get COVID testing for those who find it difficult to get a nasal swab because this test allows the patient to actually spit into a tube instead of getting a nasal swab. The tube is then collected and sent to lab for analysis. Now, a lot of people find it more comfortable. Uh, in fact, it may be safer for healthcare workers who can be farther away during the sample collection and would be at lesser risk of exposure. All right, now I'm gonna answer all of your questions. I actually have listed these questions in my phone just to make sure I don't miss any. Okay, so here we go. All right, so the first question is from Emma290. She asks, I'm scared to get the COVID test because I've heard that the nasal swab goes very high up in the nose, almost touching your brain. Is that true? Well, that's a great question. I was actually concerned about that part as well in the beginning. And then I did some research and also we've been testing um, at the pharmacy. So I've actually realized that this is not true. Basically to collect the nasal sample, you have to insert the entire absorbent tip of the swab into the nostril, but do not insert the swab more than three fourths of an inch, which is almost like 1.5 centimeter into your nose which is not bad. Now it does feel a little bit uncomfortable, but not to an extent that it goes up in your brain and makes you sneeze and all. Now, once you insert the swab into your nostril, about like I said, three fourths of an inch, then you are supposed to slowly rotate the swab in the circular motion against the inside of your nostril about five times for a total of 15 seconds. Like don't go really quick, like one, two, three, four, five, don't do that. It has to be five times for at least a total of 15 seconds and then using the same swab you're gonna collect the sample from the other nostril as well i hope that explains the process and now you won't be scared to get the COVID test all right so let's look into the next question the next question is from ben cook and he asked can i test negative and still have COVID infection ben thank you so much for this question i've been actually wanting to talk about it because this is very important well the answer to this is unfortunately yes it is possible that you could test false negative even if you have the COVID infection. Now, that's because if the sample was collected too early in your infection or as soon as after the exposure, then the, there is possibility that not enough virus was collected or built up in your nostrils if you're taking a nasal sample because we want enough viral material to build up in your nostrils to collect the sample. Or there is chances that when the person was collecting the sample, the sample was not collected uh, precisely or accurately because of the poor testing technique. So I recommend even if you test negative, you still should take steps to protect yourself and others. All right, so the next question I have is from Anna Smith and she asks, what type of COVID test is more accurate? Now there are so many tests in the market available, but I would say a molecular test using a deep nasal swab is usually the best option because it will have fewer false negative results than the other diagnostic tests or sample uh, collected from throat swabs or saliva. See, unfortunately, because it's so new, it's not clear exactly how accurate any of these tests are. And there are several reasons for this like how carefully a specimen is collected and stored, um, that may actually affect the accuracy because if the specimen is not stored accurately, then it may compromise the test results. And also a large number of labs and companies are now offering these tests. So the accuracy of these tests may vary from company to company or lab to lab. And honestly, all of these tests are so new that we don't have a lot of information about it. We don't have a definite gold standard test which we can actually use to compare these tests the bottom line is that despite the current limitation of testing i think we are very lucky to have reasonably accurate tests available 
so early in the course. Imagine where we would be if that was not the case. The whole idea of getting the COVID testing is to find out whether you're infected and if you can help slow the spread of the disease. Your actions definitely matter. So stay home if you're not feeling well. If you're infected or exposed, strictly follow the rules on isolation and practice social distancing and get vaccine as soon as you're eligible to do so. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope I answered all of your questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the comments and share this video to spread awareness. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you guys next time.